Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to another half hour of the Grand Boulevard Coalition Drug-Free Community Half Hour. My name is William Penn, as I always tell you, president of Grand Boulevard Coalition. And as you know, as we do our run-up for the big census 2020 count, the portal is open today. So we'll definitely have some good conversation around that. We have a guest that's coming in in a few minutes who's going to really get you guys ready to get out there and not only march, but to talk about getting your census done. So we look really forward to that. I also want to uh, tell everybody, as they're telling you on every news channel, make sure you drink plenty of water. Make sure you um, keep your hand sanitizer close and just be on the lookout because we don't know how far and how deep it is in a lot of communities. But as it continues to blossom into a, um, a pandemic, we want to make sure we're prepared. And if anything ever comes down where we have to um, come on the air and talk about it when I'm here on my Thursday show, I'll definitely bring you the latest updates if there's something to be updated. So without further ado, let's go to the overhead. And I want to go to the overhead. Oh, thank you. I have a great producer that I'm um, handling everything from the back end. You know, my good friends over at COCO, K-O-C-O, is involved in Seniors for Justice, and they're having an open house and fish fry fundraiser. It's going to be at the Kenwood United Church, and it's uh, this Friday, tomorrow, Friday the 13th. And what better day to eat from fried catfish than on Friday the 13th? Make sure you guys uh, come on out. There's more information at the bottom. One of their lucky sponsors is, is Census 2020. So if you have any questions about the census, they'll be able to answer it there. And, oh, they, 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 we're back. Yes, we are back. <laughs> <laughs> we're back, and my guest is here. It's like, whoa. Anyway, I want you guys to know I've been knowing this guy since I was tall as his desk. <laughs> his name is Michael O'Connor. If you are political, if you are an activist, if you are African American, if you are anything in the city of Chicago, you've seen this guy on the streets, you've seen this guy on the TV, radio, he is everywhere. He keeps trying to. I've been around. He keeps trying to tell me that he's a senior, but I don't believe him because he moves faster than I am, and he's just a great man. But before we get to him, we would like to go to the video which you kind of set up what we want to talk about video i love live tv well we're light design training institute um, we've been in business since 2007 uh, where we've changed over um, over 2,000 people's lives, just helping them through um, mental health, through life skills, through different areas. You know, people come off the street who are homeless, um, and it's been very effective in the community. My name is Dr. Jackie Sharp. I'm the CEO of Lakeside Community Committee Social Service Agency, where we provide child welfare, case management, foster care, independent living. Hi, my name is William Penn. I'm here representing CAPS, Chicago Area Project. Rose and Ceasefire as an organization employs individuals from the community that they help. They help reacclimate them to community by reinvesting themselves into the community. So my name is Heather Patterson. I work for HRDI and I want everyone to get counted for the 2020 Census. Possibilities are endless with what we can do with funding. Um, from we have a janitorial program, we have a construction program, we have a CNA program. The funding helps. It helps us um, with the community and with the individuals um, who don't have the means of resources to be able to help themselves. I'm Alexander Griffin, and I would like to thank Lights of Zion uh, for the janitorial program uh, because he's benefited me by helping me get a trade and moving on with my life. We don't have the funding that we can't do these services for the community. So we out here to, trying to help the community, the young people, the senior citizens, and the veterans. 
We want to help people in the community that need services for mental health, substance abuse. The funding comes from the government. If, if, you, if we don't do what we need to do April 1st by getting counted, then we will see the repercussions. And by you doing your census 2020, you'll be able to help yourself and us in the 31 communities that we're in. Please make sure that you fill out that survey form when you receive it. Make sure you get counted for the 2020 census. All right. <laughs> I know you guys are saying, William, how do you do a video and still have the same sweater on the next day? I just don't know how they do that. And it was three. And just to let you know, there was four of me on there. <laughs> I do dress up as a ladies, lady every now and then, and that's why they have those three with my name. Right? And that's not a problem because we want the trans community to be counted also. There you go. Of... See, I, I try to make sure we don't let nobody get uncounted. And let's get this. Let's get the show started, Mr. O'Connor. Thank you so much. Uh, Introduce I'm yourself so to the people out there. Well, I my name is Michael O'Connor. I have been around doing public policy activism and public po and legislative stuff for quite some time. Yes, you have. I, I mean, and 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 you call, I am a senior and I, you know, you are? I'm glad to be I one. I didn't know you were a senior. Cuz a lot of people didn't make it to be one. There so I'm go. glad to be a senior. I noticed that, you know, the Grand Boulevard Coalition, you stand I, I'm I'm first of all, I'm so proud of you because you know, I've known you ever since yep. you was a kid, uh, when we were kids. And as such, I know that we have 77 communities. I know that you, you was raised right, so I know you know what we got to deal with in terms of serving our community, being raised to do so. I saw in this, this was an excellent video. I'm looking at uh, HRDI, I'm looking at the Grand Boulevard Coalition, I'm looking at the Knights of Zion, and I, you know, I notice, I know some of the, a lot of the people, Chicago, uh, um, Area Project? Yeah, Chicago. Yeah. I mean, uh, Howard Lathan, the man's a legend in terms of community service here in this city and in this state, quite frankly. Yes. Because I've been, I, I've been around, you know, in one way or another as activists in terms of making sure that we deal with our criminal justice issues. Okay. I first started working with uh, former state representative Connie Howard. And we were doing, at that time, I think it was 1996, the criminal justice. Uh, that was our first bill that we were trying to deal with in terms of expungement. And that's when I really found out that was directly a result in the 90s after all of the uh, mass incarceration went straight up in terms of the Lexus on the charts here in the state of Illinois. Okay. Uh, we, we, had, we have 77 communities just here in the city. But in Cook County, we have 103 counties. And, and, and ADM is doing the farming. Technology is taking over where ADM is doing the farming. The people who are left in these small towns are being counted because of the prison, as far as the prison industrial complex, because they're counting the, the uh, as far as the people that came from Cook County that are in these prisons in these small counties, they're all being counted as, 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 as one entity. Right. So we're dealing with, it is very important that by April 1st, we have to get out here and make sure that all of us are counted because it determines so many different things. I know you and you guys are on the forefront on an ongoing basis that you're an important, an important general warrior in terms of making sure that uh, we get the money for our schools. Our, okay. Our, our, so go through some of the areas that the money goes for. Okay. The money goes to, if once they count up the numbers on the federal basis, the census will determine in terms of population and the proportionment uh, in terms of where is the population. We've been doing, they've been doing census since the Bible. Okay, Pharaoh did the census. Just, if I can recall, and not to bring up religion, and I'm not a Bible thumper, but if I can recall correctly, uh, uh, Mary, Joseph, and Jesus left Egypt because everybody had to be counted at that time. So HRDI, all of the different 
organizations that help in terms of the substance abuse, the mental health counseling, dealing with uh, all of the issues that keep our people from moving forward. If these, if we are counted, that money does not come from the federal government. Okay. And as taxpayers, we have a right to that money. We should get that money. That's when we bring congressmen to Congress for from the state of Illinois. We got 19 Congress people in the here in the state of Illinois. Okay. We got um, just in Chicago where. The, we're the largest county here in the state of Illinois in terms of population. Cook County is. So we have to make sure that our numbers are in line with our population so that we will be able to have adequate schooling, okay. so that we will be able to have adequate clinics, public clinics, especially now that we're dealing with this coronavirus. Yep. We need public clinics. We've always needed public clinics. Seniors, the vulnerable population who may not be working, who may not be employed for whatever reason. Okay. They need to be counted. So everybody who has a household, everyone, should make sure that they fill out that form and that film, mail that form back by April 1st because God knows if we don't count, we, we, we really don't count. We won't be able to get the type of funding that we we're need. going to need okay. from uh, just public sector, not just jobs, our, uh, our infrastructure, everything. in terms of everything, everything that's public, everything that's public. That's how important it is. That's how important it is, and people should know that. For those who don't, that's why I'm so glad you're doing this. Thank you, thank you. Well, two points of what you, you're saying. One, we got to definitely make sure we get it done. But it'd be great if you get it done by April 1st. The photo open today. And, you know, these seniors don't know about this, but we got modern technology now. You can do it online, so you ain't got to mail nothing in. So I, I'll come by and show you how to do that. One. Well, thank you. I but, appreciate that. But, as you know, Grand Blue Bar Coalition, we are funded to educate and help our youth not use drugs and alcohol oh, yeah. and so on and so forth. And so I'm trying to pull back around as an activist, knowing that you've always out there raising funds passing laws, writing, writing potential parts of upcoming bills and stuff. Right. What's the state of the community as you see it today, now that you've been well, out on the street for a while? I always, I, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, the state of the community, we need to understand that we need to be the change that we seek. In order to be the change that you seek, you have to educate yourself about the process. Okay. And that process in order to, so that we can deal with the substance abuse, okay. so that we can deal with the high unemployment. Mm -hmm. I mean, public policies have determined what our realities are on so many levels, People are, and people don't realize it. So for me, for the last, I mean, I'll give you an example. Uh, I talked about the Second Chance Act. That was something that was started by everyday individuals who, who really got tired of being tired. And what we, what, what we wanted, and we started dealing with that in terms of amending the criminal code because how is it that you go before the bench? See, most of us will see a judge before we'll see the president, okay? Okay. And, and you go before the bench, let's say some cop stops and frisks you, which was public policy, by the way. Um, I'm not going to get into that whole deal, but it was public policy. A lot of our people got stopped. It okay. started mass incarceration because some of us had something on us that we wasn't supposed to have. Okay. But we would, I mean, that's what happened. But it was in our community. They didn't go to the north side. They didn't go over to Mount Greenwood. They went in our community. So, of course, we're the highest populations in this process. So what we started was we found that uh, people were being prosecutorial misconduct. A young man by the name of L.G. Crivens came to us. His case, he had been, it was prosecutorial misconduct. He spent 10 years in, in, right here in prison. Okay. And he was 18 at the time. His parents had to do all kind of stuff to make sure he had legal representation. But when he got out from the Illinois Department of Corrections after uh, appealing the case, he could not get a job at McDonald's, even though he was innocent. 
He had to spend extra money to, to deal with the expungement. So we were like, wait a minute. This is not right. So all these, I can't tell you how many students have, uh, um, have gotten in trouble on a college campus. And then by the time no they are a junior or a senior, mm -hmm. they get ready for their licensing. And then they find out, well, yeah, you graduating from this college, but you can't get a professional license as a teacher, as a nurse, or any of the other professions. These are the stuff that we brought to the public way back then in the old studios of oh, yeah, you, this agency. Yeah, you okay? tell me some of the stories. Or Can TV over or downtown when they were downtown. Yes. Now, recently, well, not that recent, um... I co-authored a bill that's the only legislative enhancer of its kind in the country uh, called the Red Ribbon Cash Lottery, and it is specifically for HIV. Okay. HIV was not being dealt with. It was seen as a white gay male disease, and it should have been, I mean, it, it should have been seen as a pathogen that doesn't discriminate. Because right now, the largest risk factor in the state of Illinois are black women. And that's because there have been very little support in terms of resources. HRDI was helping with this. I knew Vince Bateman. He was the founder of HRDI. Not dating myself, but I did. He knew the process of coming to Springfield trying to make sure that we got what we were supposed to get to make sure that we were able to deal with substance abuse, alcohol disorder, with our youth, with those persons, not, and, and, and not just the young, because Squires is kept, it's a lot of old dogs out here that, you know, hit the bottle, mad dog. I ain't, you know, I, I'm not going to lie, that's, that's, that's what's what. That was your Yankee choice, huh? No, not me, <laughs> but a lot of other people. I did other stuff. In any case, let me just say this. We, this census counts the money. Okay. But we have to have the people to fight for the money so that you will begin, to, so we'll have the process. People have to understand that they don't have to have a leader. They can be the lead that they want to see, the change that they want to see. Well, let's, and, and, let's go in there. Let's well, go there. What, like we, I'm a new dog when it comes to this active, activism. And okay. You asked me what my platform, and I, I've been standing up and fighting for more resources for the opioid uh, epidemic yes. that's, that's decimating that's taking over everything. everything. Yes. But, you know, obviously you start small, so I'm starting in my community okay. and, and taking on the South Look, Side. Look, let me tell you something. And, but you you taught me a lot. So how do you get people that look like us and our age range to them know that they need to keep doing that fight? Here's what you do. And get the new the new bucks out there to get right. ready to take our you place. Bring in, you reach one, you teach one. There you go. Now say that again. You reach one, you teach one. Okay. One of my one of my good buddies who just made his transition, Mark Lovers. Okay. I'm we started out with you start out with two or three people. Ben Montgomery. These are people who worked have worked in the trenches. Ben worked for a congressman, he worked for Danny Davis. We all said, you know what? They had this state of the district, and in this state of the district, the problem came back of where are the resources? We don't have any resources. How do we educate people? So what we did was say, well, wait a minute. We need the resources. Fine. That's the problem. What's the solution? Excuse me. So two or three of us got together, and that two or three, once we reached those individuals, and started talking with them, educating them about the problem. They educated other people. The same thing we did with the second chance legislation. Okay. And we brought people down to Springfield with the legislation because we found persons who are state legislators to support us. And they had the supporters. Now, some of them you had to watch because it's about numbers. You need 67 votes out of the 100 and... I forget how many it is now, but uh, the, the same, the, the opioid deal, you're going to have to start small. If you can start with two or three people mm -hmm. because they've been adversely affected by this situation, they know what the problem is. The issue needs to be the resources around the problem. The, I mean, why is, there, why is it that human services 
organizations like HRDI and all the other ones, uh, um, as far as the Chicago Area Project, are not a top priority, or have they been? In some administrations, they have not been. Uh, Governor Rauner, to be exact, okay? Mm -hmm. If it hadn't have been for Red Ribbon Cash Lottery money, which is the only independent enhancer, revenue enhancer, we had some stuff in appropriations, but it wasn't enough money. Okay. For East St. Louis, Peoria, and, and, and Cook County, and all the other counties where the, the disease was progressing unchecked. Right. The same thing is happening with the opioid situation. So what you got to do is you got to find some young people. Okay. They're out here. There are, there are a lot of young people out here who not only know the problem but want to be a part of the solution. We cannot be stereotyped in the in into distancing ourselves from our youth. That's right, our future. No, right. That's our future. So with that being said, I know that in order to make it count, you have to get a hold of two or three people. Y'all sit down and have a conversation. Okay. Deal with one issue. Take the ideas from that one issue, bring them together, and you'd be surprised. Look, when I co-founded The Rocks, we co-founded The Rocks. Okay, way back bro. in the day. Okay, what's, what's the rocks for people don't know? Oh, Belmont Rocks, way back in the day. Frankie Knuckles and house music. Okay. Music drew people to the situation. Okay. With, uh, the white boys on the north side, and forgive my language. Hey, hey. Oh, the, the white <laughs> gay men on the north side said, oh, no, 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 you're not a part of pride. We was like, bull. Mm -hmm. We have a right. You cannot segregate it. You can't segregate Lakeshore Drive, and we'll take you to court. And Mark and I and Lloyd and a whole bunch of us got a hold to our state and our county representatives. Represented, uh, well, at the time, it was John Stroger. Okay. And we got a hold to the people and said, hey, this is what they're doing. They made some calls. We made some calls. We had our permit. We turned that into the largest health care outreach, one-day outreach in the, in the, in the state. Specifically, okay. we coalesce with, and, and, and Mark was a major part of this, mm -hmm. with the Illinois Department of Public Health, okay. the Chicago Department of Public Health, and all of the other people who are hospitals in those areas where this type of, where the lack of underserved, historically underserved young population was. And we did testing. We did have uh, uh, um, uh, all kind of testing out there for all type of things, not just HIV, but diabetes, heart issues, everything, everything. Okay. And but we still had to see us. You know, we have to. Too many of us don't know that our freedom ain't free. Okay. What that mean? That mean that we got that that there's a responsibility. It ain't just about the vote. It's about who, what's the platform of the person that you're voting for. Okay. Do you know it? Why don't you know it? How are you going to research? It's not that hard. I mean, you're the one that talked about online. Right. All, the, all that's I mean, online. They didn't even know it's online. What so is no... the position of your state rep concerning opioids? Do you know how long it took us to get... HRDI was on the front, if I can remember, of the fight to deal with needle exchange. Okay. It was the Rauner administration that said, oh, no, we're not going to do that. Okay. The same thing happened when with Mike Pence in Indiana. Right. Well, you saw the result of that. The disease went higher. So people who do not deal with science, you have to reach one, teach one. Okay. And it's not just the youth, not at all. It's some of these old. Yeah. So now how do we get? Here. So we only got it. We, we don't, don't have long. Go ahead. We don't have long. So how do we get people that look like us? I think you might answer that. Well, we get people that look like us by simply talking to your neighbors. Okay. Simply making sure, I mean, you live next Which door to somebody. Which is what I always say, yeah. I yeah, talk knock to on their door. door. Hey, 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 you got some time? Let's talk about it. They may not have the time then, but they'll have it sometime. Sit down and get ready to have that conversation. So. I am so glad that you got me on here so that we could do get, uh, well, get counted to get funds. There you go. Because God knows we need it. And I always take this last minute before, we get, before they shoot us off. To um, what do you want people to know about you? What 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 are you doing? I, I, mean, want, what, I say want, something. Let them I know. Want, I want people to know about me that I will be helping to help. I will be helping others to help ourselves for as long as I can. 
I'll, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll probably go out feet first down in Springfield or anywhere else where we can help us to help ourselves because our freedom isn't free. It's an ongoing situation. And because of that, we need to be vigilant in what we do in terms of organizing to make sure that we get counted, to make sure that we get the resources that we're supposed to have here on an ongoing basis. Thank you. Hey everybody, thank you. This was a great, we could have we could have did another um, another half an hour of this wonderful conversation. So if you take away anything, get ready to do your census, talk to your neighbor, drink your water, make sure you speak to people wash in the morning, hands. wash your hands, and just know that there's people like this out there on the street that's fighting for you and fighting for all of us, no matter what color, creed. Yeah, we got to be all our that own, stuff. We have to He's be the man our is out own there. change. We have our to, own change. And we'll leave it on that. We have to be our own change.